Hello and welcome to another installment of Web Design Fun with Cindy. So this lesson will be what we went over in class on how to put in div tags to your Dreamweaver document. So we're going to start by opening a new document and I want to select none for the layout. So an HTML type with none, HTML5 is fine. And then click create. That brings us to a new fantastically blank document. So the next thing we want to do is title our document. So I'm going to title this CSS div super fun because that's what it is. It's super fun. And then I'm going to save this. So I'm going to name this index as soon as my computer decides to wake up. Come on. Okay. Index underscore one. And like I explained in class that your final website that you want to launch is going to have to be named index.html for your home page, but for the purposes of these demos, this is index underscore one. So I'm going to hit save. And now we are ready to put in some div tags. Okay, so on the CSS style panels, I noticed that I do not have the insert panel open, so I'm going to go to window and click insert. I'm in the common area. I prefer the layout area to insert div tags. So now I have that open. My CSS styles is actually in the same panel. I'm just going to rearrange these a little bit. Okay. So first thing we want to do, we want to insert a div tag. So insert panel, insert div tag. That brings up the insert div tag window. We want to make a container that contains everything according to the CSS box model. And we want to create a new CSS rule. All of this information is correct already with the ID and the pound container. That's how you know it's an ID. You name it pound and container, but Dreamweaver does the pound for you. So click OK. That's going to bring up the CSS rule definition window for the container. And now I'm going to assign a background color so that we can see what Dreamweaver is doing for us. So I'm just going to pick any color. And I'm also going to set the width at a thousand pixels because that's the size of your Photoshop mockups. Normally web designers do not set the height because the height will auto flow according to what um, what you put in the container. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make that a height of a thousand pixels as well. The other thing that we need to do, um, we need to uncheck the same for all, and we need to make the right an auto value and the left an auto value. This will automatically center our container within our browser. And I'm going to click OK, click OK again, and now we have content for ID container goes here. Dreamweaver kind of helps us out. So if I save this file and I preview in a browser, let's just open up Safari. It's the first one in the list. Doesn't really matter which one at this point. We just kind of want to see what we have going on. Should have already had this open for you guys. Sorry. And you can see that I was watching Saturday Night Live before. Okay, so uh, that's taking up the full page. But it's in the center. There we go. Just had to hit escape there. So if I resize my browser window, it is staying in the center, which is good. It's exactly what I want the container to do. So I'm going to close that window. <laughs> close the Saturday Night Live window. It's a good commercial if you haven't seen it. It's the Activia, Activia commercial. Next thing we need to do is keep inserting div tags. 
So we also need to insert a header tag, a nav tag for the navigation, a main content tag. I'm going to show you a sidebar as well and a footer. So let's hit insert div, div tag again. And this one we want to have after the start of the tag because we want this to be inside the container tag because the container is containing all of our elements. It's holding them all onto the page. When we get done with this, we won't even be able to see the container anymore because it'll just be behind everything. So we want this next one, which is going to be the header tag. And we want it to be after the start of the container tag. And then create new CSS rule. All this information is correct by default. And I'm going to put a background color in here so we can see the difference. And I'm also going to, oops, let me actually make sure I select that. We also set the width for the header. Since my header, this is going to depend on your Photoshop mockup. My header goes all the way across the 1,000 pixels. So I'm going to type in 100% here. And that means that wherever, whatever the size of the container ends up as, this will be 100% of that container. So if I decide that I want my container to be 960 pixels instead of 1,000, I don't have to go back and change the width of the header because it's set to 100%. So sometimes when you're working on web designs, a client will say, no, I really want this to be 800 pixels wide, and you've already made it 1,000 pixels wide. So this will make it easier on you. I'm going to set the height for this at 35 pixels. It's just an arbitrary number at this point and click OK. Click OK again. That inserts the header tag. It looks like it goes above the container, but it's actually inside the container. And how we can tell that is over in the left, it's within the body tag, and it's after the start of the container tag. So this means that it's within the container tag. So we've got the header ending tag div here. This other ending div tag is actually for the container tag and we want that to just be at the very bottom there because we want everything else to go inside the container tag. So now we can continue adding div tags. So I'm going to add the nav tag and I want this to be after tag at this point because I want it to be within the container but I want it to be after the header. So we call this nav, new CSS rule. Again, defaults are correct. Let's change the background color. And change the width. So my nav goes across 100% of the 1,000 pixels. The height for my nav is going to be, I think it's 20 pixels. This is where you can you can go back into these later and change them. If you have all of the pixels figured out in your Photoshop mockup, you can go ahead and set the width and height. I just pick arbitrary numbers just to get the structure built in there. So I'm going to click OK for the nav. Click OK. And that goes after the header. And we can check our code that it's still within the container tag, but it is after the header in the correct spot. So we need to add another div after the nav tag. Make sure we pull this down to after the nav tag. And we need this one to be the main content area. This is where the images and your text will go on your home page. So let's set up the background color so we can see that. I'll go with white for that one. And this width, I'm going to set it at 700 pixels wide by 600 pixels high. So what this will do is not take up the entire 1,000 pixel width. I'm going to click OK. And we can see that we have the main nav. We have some space over here to the right because this is only 700 pixels wide. The next div I'm going to add is a sidebar. Sidebar. This is also going to be after tag, 
and this one's going to be after May, and you can see that we're going sequentially from the top to the bottom, left to right, on the page. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Oops, I think I misfired really too fast there, so <laughs> let me undo that. Hang on one second. Once my computer decides to cooperate again, sometimes you just have to talk nice to your computer so that it'll play nicely with you. Apparently I haven't been talking nicely enough to my computer because it's given me the pinwheel of death. And you have to sit through this. I would recommend fast forwarding until you see me actually making some progress. There we go. Undo. All right. Well, let's do that again. Insert div tag. After tag. After main. Sidebar. Oops. Don't even need an extra letter there. New CSS rule. This is all correct. Do another background. And let's set this, since we want it to be to the right of the main, so we need to do a little math, 1,000 pixels minus 700, because that's the size of the main div width. So that leaves 300 pixels left. We have a height of 600, and let's click OK and see what happens. And you can see that it didn't go to the right of the main, it went down to the bottom. So let's save this, go out to our browser, and look at this guy. So you can see that the container is behind everything. The sidebar is now below where I actually want it to be. And it's extending beyond the 1000 pixel height that I set up for the container. So we need the sidebar to come up to the right and we need to set the main and the sidebar div tags to float. So let's pull up the CSS styles panel, open the arrow so that we can see all of our work so far. I want to double click on this main div to open that up, go to the box properties, and we need to set the float to left. Click OK. That does a little bit, but still the sidebar is down here in the wrong place. So we need to also set the sidebar to float. And this is where it gets a little tricky. We're actually going to set the left float on the sidebar as well, even though we want it to be to the right of the main. If the main is floating left and the sidebar is after that in the code, it's going to also float left. You could set this to float right, but it'll kind of mess up things if you add more elements. So well, let's give this a shot, see what it does. Perfect. So that put the sidebar up here on the right, even though it's floating left. So now we just need one more div for the footer. So that's going to go after the sidebar, because that's the last tab we built. We want it to go below, so let's type in footer, go to new CSS rule, click OK. So this becomes a little repetitive. My footer also extends the full width of the container, so I'm going to set it at 100%. The height of my footer is 20 pixels. I'm going to click OK, and we'll see what happens. So let's save this and go out to the browser. Now we can kind of see that our footer is kind of junky down here. So let's go back to Dreamweaver and I'll show you how to fix that. So we need to get to our CSS styles panel. Double click on the footer. Let's give it a background color so we can actually see where it's at. So it's not where it should be. 
So what we need to do is go back into the footer by double clicking it, go to the box, and we have to set a clear float here. So we need to clear both the main left float and the sidebar left float so that the footer will go below those. So I'm going to click OK and now the footer is in the correct spot. The last thing we need to do, we don't need the container to actually have a height on it. Because like I said, the height is automatically determined by Dreamweaver by the amount of elements that you put in. So let's go to the box and just take away the height. Don't put zero in here because if you put zero then everything's going to go away. So just leave it blank, click OK, and take away this text for the ID there, and we don't need it. So it looks like the container's no longer here, but it's actually just behind everything. We still have it in the code, which is good, div ID container, everything else lives within the container. So that is the basic idea. The only other thing that we will do later is take out these styles because this is an internal style sheet at this point, and we're going to make those an external style sheet. We'll do that later.